Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of Little Busters. So before we jump in, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because that would mean the whole world to me. And after this video, if you liked it, hit that like button too. Alright, let's get into this. I'm a born liar. I've been lying since the day I was born. Eventually, that lie had hurt Hadaka-san, even though Fataki-san had told it to protect her from pain. In the end, it's possible to hurt another, even while being considerate of them. Hmm? I noticed Hadaka-san loitering in the hallway outside. Hadaka-san! What are you- or what were you two talking about? Let's go somewhere else first. Okay. And that's what Futaki-san said. I told her what we'd been talking about. I feel like saying even if you tell me that. I understand what you're trying to say. Yes, yes, thank you so much for your concern, is what I'm supposed to say here. But there's a con- or a- uh, A continuation to that story, though she probably doesn't know about it. She had sampled the, uh, the food a few times. After that, the Futaki- uh, the Futakis came running over from their house to shout at me. They hit me a lot. Her relatives had asked Kanata why she'd made me so soup. She said that if she or if she touched eggs, she'd break out in hives or something like that. No way. So are you trying to kill her with uh anaphylactic shock? Is what they shouted at me. She really is the dirty twin. The Futaki shouted at me like that in rage. So the uh, so the Psychosis started to beat me too. How is that something I should be thankful for? I was the only one getting beat up that night. So even if you tell me her side of the story, I'm not going to immediately say I feel better having heard it. I don't feel that way at all. But thank you for telling me, Rikikun. Haruka-san gave me a frail smile. The thing with the eggs, I thought she had said that just to get me in trouble. I guess I was wrong. To say I'm not even a little glad would be a lie, I guess. The ones doing the hitting were the Futakis and the Saigusas. The two of us weren't the ones in the wrong. Uh, that's true. We weren't in the wrong. We weren't. The denial of, in her tone softened. Haruka-san had already understood it that her hatred of that girl was misguided. In other words, she couldn't have she couldn't honestly convince herself that Futaki-san was truly a bad person. No. No. I'm not bad. I'm not bad. She is. She is. She's the bad one. She has to be. If she isn't, then everything is wrong. <laughs> Biting her lip, Haruka-san tried to endure it. Endure what? The pain of a truth she couldn't accept, of a truth she refused to accept. It was like she was being burned by the truth that had pierced her, uh, pierced her own dark feelings. <laughs> she couldn't accept it, but she knew she had to. She was not bad. It was her enemy that was the bad one. Then who exactly was her enemy? <laughs> Haruka-san. <laughs> she had hated her twin. But her twin wasn't evil either. Then who, or should she hate next? If I'm not, and she's not, then who's the bad one? Hey, Riki-kun, tell me. Who's the villain? Who can I hate? Who is my enemy? Is it alright if I hate my relatives? But my relatives told me if I hadn't been the dirty one, they wouldn't have hit me. They told me that they weren't in the wrong either. Then, then, am I, am I the worst one after all? Uh, I, then I'm, I'm, I'm... Haruka-san. I gripped Haruka-san's shoulder. You're wrong. That's wrong. But, 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 who is it then? If it's not me, who's, or who's the bad one? Who can I hate? I need to take that person's place. I want to trade their place. My place. I want a place for myself, for me, mine. Yelling in a half-crazed state, Haruka-san's eyes weren't seeing anything. 
like a small girl, a child rejected by society, by the or by the entire world, she continued to cry out loud. Haruka-san was able to keep herself going by hating. She had come this far in her life by having someone to hate. Was there anything I could say to her? Anything anyone could say? There was nothing. Nothing at all. Haruka-san. I embraced Haruka-san. I hugged her tight. So tight. Haruka-san struggled against me. Even so, I held her tightly in my arms. <laughs> my... my... my place! Someone else has to have it! I responded to Haruka-san's broken whispers. No, no one has it. Lie! That's a lie! It's true. No one else has your place, Haruka-san. I didn't have it. Neither did anyone else. Everyone has to find their own place. Find? Yes. Listen, Haruka-san. You won't find a place for yourself just by hating someone else and trying to steal theirs. Because that place would be... empty. A place full of negatives. What value was there in only focusing on stealing something away from another? You've had a lot taken from you, Haruka-san. But just trying to snatch it back is worthless. A place for yourself. But what is it that you really want to do with that place? Haruka-san, what do you want to do? Stop asking yourself what or what you should do. What do you want to do? I want to be... Hmm? I want someone to tell me they love me. Right. And then? I want to say I love them too. And then? Is that everything? I want to hear that they want me to be with them. And I want to say that I want them to be with me. Haruka-san only wanted to be understood. She wanted someone to understand her, to care for her existence. Instead of being rejected, she wanted someone to say, Yes, I understand. That small kindness was all that she really wished for. Then you don't have to hate anyone anymore. You don't need to go looking for a villain. She had been supporting herself by hating someone. Because I love you, Haruka-san. But that was only supporting her own existence. I want to be by your side. A person is not meant to protect themselves alone. I've already told you this, Haruka-san. So it's all right already. It's all right now. I softly stroked her hair. I had heard her true intention. Haruka-san's one true wish. It's all right. Haruka-san closed her eyes. Riki-kun. I gently kissed her. Just a light kiss. Hey, Haruka-san? Haruka-san suddenly went limp in my arms. I held her up in a panic. She was so er, she was so relieved she passed out. I stood down or stooped down and picked Haruka-san up in my arms. Hoop. Then I carried her to the dorm. Morning. Haruka-san's eyes were red when I found her in the hallway. Did you get any sleep? Yeah. Did you have a bad dream? I invited Haruka-san to come sit with me on the stairs, and then began to stroke her head soothingly. I don't think I was dreaming, but somehow it was really sad and really happy. I don't understand exactly, but it was like, like it was all washed away in a rush. I think I'm fine now. She gave her chest a thump and smiled brightly. Thanks, Riki-kun. I didn't really do anything to be thanked for. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be so humble. What are you going to do from here? I'm going to ask her. I'll ask her with my head bowed down. Haruka-san stated her determination without hesitating. Help me! Please help me! I'm begging you, please help me! Are you going home? I thought today wasn't a day to report in! Futaki-san clicked her tongue in annoyance, her face unable to mask her irritation. Is this some new way to harass me? No? Then just give it up. I already told you I'm not going to help you. But I can't do it alone. 
You only keep saying that because it's what mom told you. You're wrong! What am I wrong about? Up to now, it's been exactly like you're saying. I thought I'd never bow my head to you. But it's different now. I'm asking you of my own free will. Then get down on your knees and ask me. Eh? If you're all right with bowing your head, then just do it. If you do, or if I do, will you help me? Just do it! Kutaki-san yelled hysterically. The air was thick with tension. The one who broke it was Haruka-san. I understand. H haruka san haruka san bent her knees. Without a care for her skirt or the school uniform, she knelt on the dirty ground and bowed her head. I'm begging you. Please help me. Futaki-san's irritation seemed to reach its peak. You! Just how did you convince her to do this? She turned to glare at me. I met her eyes evenly. I didn't convince her to do anything. Haruka-san really wants your help. She wants to know the truth about your parents' circum er, circumstances. Idiotic. Ha! How stupid! How pathetic! You'll go that far just to find out whether you're the failure? That's not your real reason, right? You want to find out that I'm the unwanted one, don't you? You want to trade places with me, right? Because you can't take it anymore. You can't stand it, so now you just want, want to run away, isn't that it? Futaki-san placed her foot down on Haruka-san's head. With you planning something like that, who would help you? Who would? Who the hell would help you? She raised her foot high. Even with that, Haruka-san didn't make a move to defend herself. Seeing that, Futaki-san stopped. What? Why aren't you running? Defend yourself! Do something cowardly like you always do! That's all you can do, isn't it? I'm not going to run anymore! Haruka-san spoke with her face still pressed against the ground. Running away won't fix anything after all. So all that's left is to face you. Futaki-san's cheek twitched. Her face distorted into a pained expression and I couldn't guess what she was thinking. Futaki-san. What? Haruka-san realized that striking out at each, or at each other isn't going to solve anything. You. As for you, you've known that all along, haven't you? I'm going to ask you once more the question I asked you before. Your life with the Futakis. It hasn't been a happy one, has it? That has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with me. Is that all you have to say? You keep sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. Do you think you could persuade me like that? My, how thoughtful. I feel like vomiting. You are how wonderful. You were able to save that girl. Isn't that enough for you? You're the hero who picked up the poor castaway from a sand er from a sand bank. I didn't rescue Haruka-san. I had my hands full of er full of just saving myself. There weren't any uh Deix machina or machina in real life. In our world, there were just us. I just held out my hand for her. All we could do was help each other fight that which was or which was unseen. It's nothing to be proud of, nothing to boast about. That small kindness is all we're capable of. If we didn't want to be cut by the invisible blade of reality, to keep being swept away in the flow of wrongdoing and being wronged, Haruka-san took my hand. Won't you accept Haruka-san's? From where I stand, it looks like you are the one in danger of being swept away. Futaki-san was expressionless. Her gaze drifted from me to Haruka-san. If you find out, you won't be able to go on like you have until now. All of the irritation and anger had left her voice. If you do this, it'll be gone. Everything will be gone. The days up to now, and the days hereafter. Knowing that, you're still asking me to help you. Futaki-san asked quietly. Yes! Haruka-san nodded. I want this to be over. To love someone. To tell them I love them. I want to find the real meaning behind that now. That's why I want to learn uh, to know my true self, together with the person I love. At the beginning, 
I just wanted it all to be over. There was a pause. It was probably only a short moment, but it seemed to drag on for an eternity. I don't really know what a normal family life is supposed to be like, but... Hesitantly, the words leaked out. Her shoulders were shaking weakly. I never lacked for things. Candy, toys, whatever I wanted I got, as long as I kept on winning. After the two had been disheartened, or whoops, disinherited, sorry, their relatives had tried to get the, uh, the imprisoned father's medical records. He had refused. They had offered to pay his bail and legal fees. They had said that or they would even give him financial assistance, but he didn't agree to any of that in return for his medical inspection. That's why the family didn't know which of us was which. That, or that's why they were so adamant about making you two compete. Right. And after that, you kept winning over Hadakasan. You didn't want to be looked down on like Hadakasan was. It's all the same. You're so wonderful. Not like that other child. They always praised me so much. Even so, they were never able to overcome the doubt that I might be the shame of the family. Especially since the Futaki had a rivalry with the main family. If I ever did a sloppy job, Futaki-san's body trembled. Hitting people with a leather belt is the Futaki family specialty. They, or they were the worst kind of lowlives, enthralled at seeing the number of scars on my body increase. All the boys who have seen my arms under my long sleeves have been shocked. Neither Haruka-san nor I could say anything to Futaki-san, who was wearing a warped smile. Haruka-san was hanging her head, just shaking it weakly every once in a while. I put up with the pain. When the pain in my body was gone, I had to deal with the pain in my heart. I became used to the feeling of guilt. I worked hard. There were nights I didn't have time to sleep. Rather, I wasn't allowed to sleep. Studies, sports, etiquette, you name it. I couldn't stop excelling in everything. The successor to the Saigasa family had to be prepared for that much. That's what I was always told. I had to be that way. Why? If it turned out that neither of us was appropriate to the uh, to the heir, they had no use for either of the twins. That's what they told me. What? What? What's that supposed to? I mean. I can understand that there could only be one heir, but was that really the whole reason? The fact that our other father existed, the fact that he had brought shame on the family, they couldn't accept that. For that Saigasa family to produce a criminal, a convict, they couldn't put up with the gossip. Just for that? Yes, just... just for that. It's funny, isn't it? Isn't it hilarious? Feel free to laugh now, Eriki. You are different from Haruka, they told me. Different from that sullied girl with her dirty blood. Haruka-san grasped the sleeve of my uniform tightly. I could hear... Okay, I don't know why my phone uh made an, made an alarm. It shouldn't have. It should be on vibrate, but okay. <laughs> I could hear her sucking in her breath. I felt her hand tugging on my shirt sleeve, it, or it was trembling hard. But I didn't understand it, because my... Futaki-san faltered. My... Her fist, or her fisted right hand was trembling. It was white from the strength of her grip, as something small fell on it. it was, or what was dripping down under her hand? Were, were Futaki-san's tears. My... Sister, my sister was no different from anyone else. Suddenly, the pull on my sleeve disappeared. As if not knowing where to go, Haruka-san's hand hung in the air. So I took that hand. Haruka-san's hand that answered my grip tightly was covered in sweat. Even so, despite that, they told me, Do not worry about Haruka. Despise the girl named Haruka. She... Or show her no kindness. Do not speak to Haruka. Do not give Haruka a hand. Do not look at Haruka. If you do that, if you do that, you will be the heir of the Saigusas. You'll be free to do whatever you like, free to buy whatever you like, free to have whatever boy you like. Still, I shook my head. 
At the same time as they beat Haruka-san, they, sh uh, they showered Futaki-san with gifts and nice clothes, like pouring poison onto her. Then, they... They... They said this. If you don't like it, then you became- or then you become Haruka. You won't nod, will you? You don't want to, right? You don't want to become like Haruka, do you? Such words. How they stank, those rotten words. Imagining a small child confronted by those words, I felt frozen inside. Without realizing it, I clenched my hand tightly. I didn't nod. I wasn't afraid of being bullied. I was- or I wasn't scared of it, but I was- I was- The me that did not nod was scared stiff. Futaki-san held her head and- or and continued. One of you needs to be called, said- or they said. No way. What kind of person could say something as terrifying as that? Just how could you face a child and say that? Haruka-san's uh, distress was transmitted to me through our linked hands, so I squeezed her hand. It was my signal for her to be at ease. Haruka-san returned the squeeze. We'll let you choose, you or your sister. Pick one. The one you choose will be cut out, but I imagine it will be, or it will end up being her, now won't it, Kanata? So, what choice was there? What choice was there but to treat Haruka as that man's child, hate her like they did him, thrust her away like they had? If I didn't, Haruka, or Haruka would, Haruka would disappear. That's why I, I can't help you. It was a clear rejection. I can't. She repeated the words as if she was trying to convince herself. I can't take your hand. Futaki-san's voice was permeated with unspoken pain. I felt Haruka-san uh, separate her fingers from mine, but at the last moment she hesitated, so I gently pushed her fingers away. I met Haruka-san's eyes. It is your turn now, right, Haruka-san? Yeah. The two of us exchanged a small nod. It's all right! She, or as she said it, she resolutely drew her warmth away from me. Eh? <laughs> Haruka-san held out her hand. It's fine! You had your reasons too, so it's fine! Even so, Futaki-san shook her head. She drew back, distancing herself. It's not fine! It's not! Not even a little! How could it be alright? It is! It's fine! It's alright now! It's not! I've done such horrible things! I understood! I didn't want- or I didn't want to do it! I'm just a bully. I, I'm not worth reaching out your hand to. I'm not. She had stopped moving. Haruka-san, who had decidedly seized Futaki's hand, uh, drew her back. Haruka-san smiled wordlessly. Haruka? S ah, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Slowly, she hesitantly, timidly allowed her fingers to link with Haruka-san's. I thought I was the only one who was unhappy. It seemed such a simple thing. There just wasn't enough happiness for the both of us. We thought it was just like a game, where we had to snatch up all the happiness for ourselves. I see it now. We both were just having our happiness stolen away. Sorry. I'm sorry, so sorry. Why are you apologizing? Because, because I, I've always just been thinking of myself. No, it was all I wanted to think about, even though I should have understood that it was hard for my sister too. Futaki saw his shoulders quivered. So it's all right. It's all right now. It's all right. <laughs> Realizing that she might have been too forceful, Haruka-san opened her eyes. Will you forgive me? There's nothing to forgive. I... I... Haruka-san shook her head. Thank you. If you say we should end it, then let's end it. And then, let's go see him. For the truth you never knew. Yeah, yeah! Haruka-san kept nodding while tears ran down her cheeks. Oh my god! Ah! 
Mutaki-san stopped in front of the shopping district. What's wrong? You want to know everything. Yes, everything. At Haruka-san's answer, Futaki-san looked hesitant again, but she shook her head. Let's go. Okay. I followed the two of them as they walked hand in hand. The man was there on, on his usual bench. What, Kanata and Haruka? And one other extra. I frowned but kept silent. I see. The other father laughed. As he saw Haruka-san and Futaki-san together, he laughed. Looks like you two finally made up. It's not like we were fighting. Neither of us tried to understand each other, and our feelings and our feelings conflicted, is all. Idiot. That's what sibling rivalry is all about. This all right, Kanata? Futaki-san nodded. Guess there's no choice, then. You've got permission from those two, right? They told us we had to go together. My sister and I. Good grief. So after everything, it still all comes down to me. He shrugged. Ask away. Whatever you want. If I know the answer, I'll tell you. Anything? Yeah, anything. Why, or why did that crime happen? Your mom was just a kid who didn't know anything at the time. After we had spent the night together, she ran out crying. She f had finally realized the abnormality of the situation she was in. Me and her other husband. She was trying to pretend she could love us both equally. But we really did love your mother. We couldn't just love her like that. Or we just we couldn't just leave her like that. We couldn't just leave her to the mercy of that rotten family's customs. But there was no way for us to escape, and so... And so that happened. Yeah, the three of us were backed into a corner, so there was no other way out. I was the one who thought it up. Father. Just like I predicted, we were, or we were disinherited, and I was thrown in jail. Why? Why did you have to take that role? Why do you go that far? Because it was important. Among that twisted world, it was important. She was precious to both of us, as we were, or as were the unborn baby she was carrying. But that you would, or but that you would be picked up by your relatives was a miscalculation on my part. After that, I guess you girls know the rest. Why didn't you tell us about any of this? We only heard about how complicated things had gotten afterwards. In the end, we concluded our choice. Uh, would bring nothing but pain for you. That's why we thought it was best to leave it ambiguous like it was. If we had said which or which was which, it would only have caused a cleft between you. Uh, it was, er, at the very least, we wanted to leave you one thread of hope. If ever you were unhappy, you wanted to at least be able to think, maybe it's their fault. We wanted to be able to at least give you both that much. That's why Mother and her other husband stayed on the run. I promise not to say anything, but looks like that was all unnecessary. From the fact that you're both here, it seems like it's not your wish to look down on each other. It was the truth that, or it was the truth that didn't improve by its telling. An escape attempt by people who were treated like furniture and upon the children who could not escape. It had brought misfortune. Nobody was in the wrong. Everyone had just chosen a slightly twisted path, all the while believing that what they chose would be best for the person they were thinking of. It's a stupid story. While thinking of each other's happiness, we brought nothing but grief to one another. It's an idiotic story that no one could make right. Even so, Haruka-san and Futaki-san have overcome it. I could tell that much even without you saying. And so, the man rolled up his sleeves. There's still one last question left, right? Which is which? I'll give you my blood or whatever you want. If you submit it somewhere, they'll tell you. Haruka-san shook her head. You won't ask. Is that your answer? Yup, I'm me. And that's all there is to it. It doesn't matter which one I am. I am me and... I just... Wanted to confirm to myself that there aren't any bad ones in this world. No one is in the wrong. 
so I don't have to hate anyone. I... I just wanted to say that, so I'm fine not knowing. I thought that everything in this world had to be either against me or someone else, but it's not like that. I'm glad that I'm who I am. Nobody... I don't have to hate anyone, and no one was in the wrong. I'm just... I'm happy just being able to confirm that. That's it, the thing I really wanted to know. And it was what I wanted to believe more than anything. That there are no evil ones in this world. Haruka, thank you. Haruka-san bowed her head deeply to both of them. Thank you for telling me. I stood at Haruka-san's side. Raising her head, the girl I loved showed me the most beautiful of smiles. I wordlessly put my arm around her. And or as I glanced at Futaki-san, I caught her lips moving a little. It dawned on me, or yeah, it dawned on me that she was smiling. Hey, Haruka-san, have you noticed? I asked in a quiet voice. Isn't that a smile on Futaki-san's face? <laughs> You're right! Hearing my words, Haruka-san raised her voice in a laugh. Oh my goodness. Alright, you guys ready? Hey, Haruka-san, why are you beside me? Yeah, it's a little embarrassing. She, or she, whose idea was this anyway? I believe it was yours. He, ow, my ear, my ear is gonna tear. Of course it isn't. Get over here. I smiled wryly. Here, Haruka-san, I'm taking the picture now, so sit still. The three adults behind the arguing twins stood still. One was smiling, deeply moved. One had a relieved expression. And the last one was standing a little apart from the rest. But that gruff profile couldn't conceal his joy. Here we go. That's right. This was just the beginning. For everyone, rather than the end of a story, this was only the beginning. Hey! What, Haruka? Don't tug! Hey, hey! What is it? Yeah! Aww! <laughs> there! Kya! Take it! Take it, Riki-kun! wait Why are you clinging to me? It's gonna blur, Haruka-san. Is that fine? Fine, fine! All right, cheese! I pressed the button on the digital camera. The sound of the picture being taken was like a voice of a congratulations for the twin sisters. Oh, okay. All right, well, <laughs> that went by too quickly for me to read. That's all right. Oh my god. Okay, so I knew that this uh that this route was going to be really tough uh to like get through because I already kind of knew Haruka-san's story uh based off of the anime. Um, clearly, obviously I didn't know the whole thing, like, cause I, if I remember correctly, the anime doesn't go through, a, like, every single, like, detail of the stories, um, but I knew the gist of it, and I already knew that this was gonna be really tough, <laughs> I think I've cried to, like, every ending thus far, and we still have to get to Haruka-san's bad ending as well. So that's the thing that we're going to have to do next. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a it's a really good route. I'm really glad that I'm playing through this entire game. And I'm really glad to have been able to get through Haruka's because she has always kind of like interested me since I watched the anime. And, like, her and her sister, like, that whole thing, that whole dynamic was just, uh, really, I, uh, I don't want to use the same word again, but really interesting to me. And having seen it all, I'm really glad that I did because, I don't know, it touched me, it touched me deeper than I thought it was going to. Um... I personally haven't been through that kind of situation where I'm put up against somebody like that, but 
I do know somebody else who is in my life who kind of has. And it puts things into perspective. <laughs> uh, it puts things into perspective and um, things are just... I mean, it's just really wrong. Like, really wrong. And um, it helps me to understand that person a little bit better with what they went through in their past. Obviously, it wasn't, like, to this extent, but it was still very bad, uh, what they went through. And, yeah. I'm just glad that I was able to see this and... Uh, and be able to have that understanding now. <sighs> if you liked it, hit that like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. And we're going to see if there's anything else after the credits. I don't think there is, but we'll see. Nope. All right. So that's it. I love you guys so much, and I will see you next time. Bye!